Hi guys, I made a video quite a wee while back about the Godan Maltak Nyland and as usual after I've done it I just thought I should have said this and I should have said that. So I'm going to take this opportunity just to say a few more things about it, it won't be long. And because one of the, the thoughts that occurred to me after I'd done it, I realised maybe not all the guys that would buy these, by the way I hasten to add I have nothing whatsoever to do with Godan guitars, I wish. Uh, maybe a lot of the guys or people that want to play these are not necessarily an island string players and there's one or two wee synchronicity, uh, synchronicity strange things about an island string so that you really need to be aware of lesson number one when playing an island string do not play by cheap strings they absolutely kill the guitar uh, as well as sound playability intonation right intonation is a big thing especially a, a guitar like the Gordon go down where you can play right up to the gods. You need your intonation perfect, and that's one of the things that sold this guitar to me. It does keep that intonation perfectly great up here, as long as you're using good strings. If you play cheap strings, it'll completely ruin the guitar, and uh, these guitars are not cheap for a good reason. I mean, you can tell when you're looking at your guitar or looking at these, if you get a chance to play the one. They don't th uh, throw these out every five minutes. They're extremely well made, and... This is an early one. I've had this one a long time. Done a lot of gigs, done this, that and everything with it. And it's still a great guitar. So don't ruin it by putting cheap strings on it. Now if you don't really know a lot about nylon string guitars, it's not like when we buy steel string guitars, different gauges, 10s, 11s, 12s and so forth and mix sets up. Although nylon strings, I have to admit, are going that way. But in general, you buy them in tensions. So you can get the normal tension which is just what it says in the tin, or you can get the hard tension. You can actually get a super hard tension, but for all the years I've been playing nylon string guitars, all the guitars I've got, I've never ever used hard, uh, super hard tension. So the G string on them mm. is really tubby, and it's, I don't like the sound of them, and I don't get any particular benefit of them. So normally the ones you'll go for will be uh, normal tension strings. The only time, as I said to a friend of mine on the internet, when you would use hard tension strings is, say you were doing a recording something, say you were just recording one particular piece of music or you are only playing one particular tune. The harder tension strings you use in an Allen string guitar, the better it is because same rule as a steel string guitar. The, the harder string causes more vibration, it actually gets the top to move. And even in a thin-bodied guitar like the Godan, although it's hollow, it does make a difference. It really does, the hard tension strings. But the nylon strings, uh, medium tension, are absolutely fine. It's medium tensions that are on these just now. And again, the main reason why I said don't go and buy a really cheap set of strings is because the intonation will go out. You'll not get perfect harmonics. You'll, you won't be perfect at the 12th fret. So if you go for the better grade of strings, the bigger makes, you'll know who they are, or somebody will help you out with them. This is what keeps the intonation really good on them. And this is the downside in nylon string guitars, or nylon strings in general. It's when they start to go, you know, when you've been playing them forever, the first thing obviously that goes is the, the bright sound. It's just like chewing gum, lovely peppermint flavour, whatever. Then after a while it dies. Exactly the same with nylon strings. But as well as, the, you know, the crisp sound going on you, the intonation will go. So in the island string guitar world, you don't get away with, like say, keep, no, it's a good set of strings I've got in my Les Paul, I just left them on. You don't get away with that. Maybe in the future, as I say, the technology is changing all the time in the island strings, which is really good for us, because I say the intonation's a lot better on them now. Uh, I've heard stories of uh, uh, a guitarist that would carry micrometers with them, professional classical guitarists that would, would buy, like say, 10 E strings, and they knew what the diameter that it should be, and they'd go through every string with a micrometer, just checking them, just checking them, just checking them, right, I'll take that one, not that one, that one, not. So when they were given a recital, they knew their guitar was going to be in tune, but that was in the bad old days. Although watch some of these really old cheap strings, that's exactly what happens, you're all over the place, so I think I've made enough of a point in that. 
So it's really a thing to remember. Strings are very important. And again, as I've said before, I'm no one, I don't endorse strings, as I say. The main reason being, I've got quite a few classical guitars and I don't think I've got the same make a string in each one in any of them. Uh, so it's really, every time your guitar, if you're playing, when I'm doing a lot of gigs, you change it about three or four times, uh, every three or four weeks. But if I'm not, I keep the strings on, literally to the sound dies in them and the intonation goes. So when that time comes, uh, just buy another brand, try another brand. Uh, but as I say, go for the top mates, and it's not so much if it's best for the guitar, it's you, it's your sound. You think, oh, I really like the sound of these. I know that somebody else might say that they're dreadful, but it's what you think. And as I say, so every time you change your set of strings, try a different brand. As I say, I don't use one particular brand. All my guitars, well, all my nylon string guitars, yeah, they do. They've all got different brands of strings on them. And tensions as well, <coughs> uh, like some Ramirez. It's full of testosterone, that's the loudest guitar I have. I live in an apartment, and when I'm playing guitar, that's the one the neighbours hit down the wall. You know the electric guitar and the Ramirez, it's so loud, even when it's not plugged in or anything. So it has medium tension strings on it, and you can hear it for the end of the street. I put hard tension strings on it to record one or two things, but I knew it was by the end of it, as I say, I was tired out. I've also got another classical guitar I'll show you later on, my, my lovely Asturias John Mills. It's a beautiful guitar, but it's half asleep most of the time. So I have to put hard tension strings on it to wake it up, get the wood to move. And of course, when it does, it sounds beautiful. So that's why I'm not coming out and saying, use this, mate, use that, mate, use the next thing. Try them all the time, as I say. The only caveat being, don't buy cheap strings. And as I say, back to the Godin. The strings really replay. One of the things I don't think I said enough about the last time, is the width in this, the necklace on this, this is the, the, the Godin multi ink SA and it's actually got quite a narrow uh, width in the fingerboard here. I'm pretty sure Godin, as I say, I don't speak for them, but I'm pretty sure they do a classical guitar version where it's the same width as a classical guitar. But I actually enjoy this. I mean, I played classical guitar all my life and I get quite a buzz out playing the narrow width neck because I can get doing things I wasn't doing before, at least I think I told you before, pivot chord. <laughs> All sorts of things, and I actually enjoy it. And it definitely doesn't impede anything I do in playing, even though the fingers, the, the strings are closer together. Uh, the guitar can handle it, and still get the separation. You know. Doesn't bother my right hand in any way, nor the left hand, as I say, it's there. And the other thing I really like about the Godin is you can really hear the. I said before the difference in tone. Just be placing the right hand. As I say, that's what sold it to me. As you can see, near enough all the time, I'll have these EQs just basically uh, set at the middle. This one at the end is for the synth, which as I keep saying, I've got it onto a rolling synth, but you've got to be very judicious with this, otherwise it sounds too gimmicky, but it really does help quite a lot. And this is the volume control here. And all I do is I just take time to get the right sound. If I'm playing at a concert and a stage, as I say, I'll play it a few times. If I want to put on more bass, middle or treble, I'll do it from here. Everything else is all set. And uh, I think I said this before, any time I've done a concert, very, very rarely have I had to add on any extra bass or lower end. It's always the top end, because obviously, hopefully, as the crowds come in or you've got a decent audience, mm. this tend to, well, for me, they tend to observe, uh, uh, take away the, the top end of the notes. So obviously, to be able to put a wee bit more on it. But as I say, the other great thing about the go down is <laughs> where you play with the right hand, the bridge in the middle, at the top of the neck really makes a difference. You can hear the difference in sound. As I said, the only thing I would ask, if you do decide to get one of these, suggest I should say, just take your time with the sound. Too many times have I heard people playing these, and they just plug them in and go on with it, and you think, no, this guitar can sound so much better. With just five minutes work, just uh, adjusting this, that, and the next thing. In fact, if you looked at one of my videos, uh, yeah, Andy Duffy, Prelude, Prelude de la Source, uh, I recorded that. Uh, yeah, can't remember if I recorded it anyway, 
But uh, the sound that comes from there wasn't done in mixing desks or anything like that. It was done with just me settling the guitar up myself. And uh, it's quite a good sound. And there's quite a few early videos I've done where I'm playing the Godan. Uh, one was in a really, really old-fashioned hall. And there, it was filmed and recorded me on the stage. But again, the sound was done with me on the stage. It wasn't done in the recording studios, I say, with mixing desks or anything like that. Anywho, guys, that was just a few extra things I thought I'd say to you about the Godan, especially as I say, if you went an island string player. Just watch the strings, try different kinds of strings, uh, go for medium tensions. Uh, later on, I'm pretty sure, in fact, there's some of the really expensive companies will do them in gauges, but just go for medium. Uh, and then, remember the old thing I keep saying, the more you play the guitar, the better you'll get, plus the better the guitar sounds. And as I say, this is guitar, and it's worth the bother. Anyway, so thanks for that, and I'll see you again. Andy out. Mm -hmm.